to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Masrini? Here. Mrs. Patel? Welcome. She's here. Mrs. Zelesnik? Here. Mr. Torah? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Kearney? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to ask anybody in the audience who has a public comment, please step up to the microphone, give us your name and address. Um, can I get an album copy of what I want to say about? Certainly. When I started out, it was three minutes, and then I took longer than three minutes, and then I thought of more and more and more. <laughs> I thought I spent my weekend thinking about this. How many other parties? Lost some hats. I think I was wrong. Do you want me to get another one? Yeah, the paper posts are a little annoying. Thank you. I'm in the corner. Is it more than one? Because the paper clips are sticking to each other. Does this come off on the other side? No, no, no. is about the otherwise very beautiful new building. Thank you. Uh, but that I do have some safety concerns, and I'm going to speak specifically about the balcony railing. Uh, I was a rehab nurse for 20 years. The people of rare, improbable, and debilitating accidents were my patients. Among them were falls over barriers. So. Uh, my son is over six feet tall with sneakers on, and the top of the railing hits him just below his belly button. Add to that his higher center of gravity because he's male, and it's a higher risk. Females are taller too now as each generation is getting taller, and they also wear heels, which adds to height and instability. So consider the heights of the next generation of students and staff that will be attending this campus. Additional risks include pubescent, adolescent episodes of awkwardness, mindlessness, clumsiness, and unpredictable mood swings from excited jesting to rage. These can and do lead to bumps, scares, fights, and intentional or accidental falls of people or belongings. Thinking about the falls of belongings, I can see even my own daughter holding her Chromebook or some heavy binder of book and excitedly seeing a friend down there leaning over and, oops, there goes the heavy belonging on somebody's head or neck. So there's another <coughs> reason. Um, in the hospital, the number one cause of falls is unexpected movement. So as caretakers, we were trained to expect the unexpected and to learn to anticipate it, and then initiate a plan to prepare and prevent it as much as possible. From safetyrisk.net, Quote, our opinion is that building codes and standards are a minimum requirement and there is an overriding legal obligation to fully assess the risk and go above and beyond minimal standards if required. The main point is to properly assess, this is the bold capital letters, properly assess the risk and implement appropriate controls. We know that safety standards and practices are constantly changing. This is largely due to cumulative tragedy. Codes have all changed because all have the names of victims attached to their implementation. Since Chartier's Valley is rightly teaching innovation and critical thinking skills and is building a great new school to meet anticipated future needs, then let's practice what we teach and innovate on this anticipated, anticipated safety need. Understandably, there will be a cost, but it is guaranteed to be less than the awards for long-term permanent or injury resulting in death. Improbable, yes, but I'm here because I know that improbable happens, and I couldn't live with myself if someone got hurt while I saw the risk and did nothing. 
I am not the only parent who shares this concern. Um, I did attach some pictures. Sorry, here's all black and white. <laughs> the cost color was shocking. Um, ideas uh, made some plexiglass, some holes. Uh, you can put, you, can, you know, the collaborative thing where you get the shop involved. This is DIY. You know, this example right here. You can put uh, little hooks around this hook it in so you get the airflow, you get the little plants which have beauty and healthy air quality as the floor of carbons are going to be real high up in the new construction. So, what I say? Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you so much for putting yeah. together and bringing it to our attention. Okay, uh, there's Absolutely. a little more written there, but I wanted to. No, yeah, yeah, no, thank, thank you very much. I think it's a, a very valid concern and a great observation. And, you know, we'll discuss it as a board with our construction team and, and see what, you know, what we can come up with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Kate Murray. I live at 123 Foxcroft Road. Um, I came with some safety concerns as well. Uh, Kathy beat me to the railing. Nice job. <laughs> uh, we were not the only two moms in open house. There was a lot of work, a lot of that going on. Um, uh, and I know that at Brashear High School, my alma mater, um, they did actually end up putting plexiglass in because of projectiles, just for the record. Um, another concern I had was the windows. Um, they're kind of casement windows, they cranked open, but they cranked open wide enough that the students, if you were so inclined, could fit through them. Um, they are well known among the student body as the suicide windows. Just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Um, I was concerned about the space being a little too open. I don't know what the plan is. I, I think it's more good maybe make parents feel more comfortable there is a plan to need them a lockdown or um, an active shooter situation. It seems, I, don't, I just don't know where the students would go in the comments area, I guess. Um, uh, let's see, the construction personnel being in the building with the students, I was just kind of wondering what safety precautions are being taken there as far as background checks. Um, I'm very concerned about the air quality on the campus. Um, if you could maybe put my mind at ease that like, all the OSHA regulations are being followed because it seems like there's an awful lot of dust up there. Um, it looks like in the past meeting minutes it's been addressed a little bit, but that the testing may have been stopped. Um, I'm not sure if that was air testing or what you were discussing, but no. Um, and I don't know if there's any asbestos in the old school. I know the dating of it is right, but I, I'm going to assume that would be taken care of. Um, the tunnels. To me, look like a fire hazard. Please bear with me. My dad was a safety guy at Bettis, so, <laughs> so I, I was born this way. It's in your blood. Um, what's it's that? in your blood. It's in your blood. Yes, sir, it is. I was, the, I was born this way. Um, when I looked at the tunnels, all I could think was those really crowded full of kids. They don't look like they are um, laying retardant structures, and I'm sure they don't have sprinklers in them. I just I'm concerned that Are you referring to the temporary hallways or temporary yeah, temporary hallways. Hallways. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean I just keep thinking about the Liberty Bridge. When when you have an active construction site, accidents can happen and those temporary hallways um, made me a little bit nervous. They look a little bit tight. Um, so that really um, those are my safety concerns. I really appreciate it for allowing me to bring them to you today. I did bring copies. Um, I will leave here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your comments. They're all well thought out as well. Could you? Could yeah, you our, our construction team is here tonight, so we will have him address some of those issues while they're here tonight. Thanks. Anyone else from the audience? Okay. One, two, our recognition Mr. Seltzer, any recognitions? No, not tonight. All right, on to our superintendent's report. No report tonight? All right, on to our consent agenda. Anybody have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? 4.1 through 4.5. I'm sorry, action discussion. There's not, nothing on the consent agenda. Nothing. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the action discussion uh, agenda. 4.1 is uh, to get a motion to approve the salary increase for the assistant superintendent for school leadership. Um, the 
Mr. Scott Seltzer, motion to approve a 3% increase to Mr. Scott Seltzer, Assistant Superintendent for School Leadership, pay salary effective July 1st, 2017. And I get a motion to do that. Second. Mrs. Murphy, seconded by Mrs. Lesnick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Yeah, she voted yes. Yeah, she, 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 uh, yeah, she okay. voted yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's one or two left, yeah. in case you want. I want to thank you for stepping up. Um, 4.2. This is a motion to approve salaries for Act 93 employees, confidential secretaries, and individual contracted personnel per agreements as determined by the Board of School Directors of Chartiers Valley School District, effective July 1st, 2017. These, these uh, salaries were all discussed and, and uh, unanimously approved. Um, anybody have any questions or comments on this? Can I get a motion to approve 4.2? Mr. Corris, seconded by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. 4.3, approve a service agreement. This motion is to approve service agreement with UPMC, Western Psychiatric Institute and Clinic for specialized academic assistance for students. Stop, can you give us some background on that? Yeah. Um, Basically, we, we get agreements with uh, certain uh, hospitalization to really help uh, work with our students that we identify that need that special help. So UPMC is uh, one of those groups who we do this, we just need uh, to prove the right to do that. This contract, uh, the service agreement, we, we have, uh, have we seen it, has it been on? When you, when you, uh, it was, I think it was, it was on the last, uh, Friday. No, no, Friday. No, on Friday. Friday. <laughs> Everybody have any questions on the agreement? How can anything? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Um, in the context of the, the version that we're looking at for this year, are there any significant changes from last year, whether it be cost or any other um, limitations or restrictions that they may have added to the contract this year? Any differences? No. And from the cost perspective? Is I believe it is uh, because it's usually per student. Um, so I, I can't give you a definite answer that will stay the same or be increased or decreased because it's normally done per student. But the per student cost has not changed. Per student. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Right. Can I get a motion to approve 4.3? Service agreement with UPMC, Western Psychiatric Institute, and Clinic for Specialized Academic Assistance for Students. Mrs. Okay. Lesnick, second by Mr. Kramer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to abstain. I work for UPMC. Mr. Kearney's abstaining. Any opposed? So moved. Okay. <clears throat> At this point, I'd like to ask our construction team manager, Mr. Jason Day, to step forward and give us a construction update. Okay, your summary is uh, should be front end there, <coughs> monthly report. Uh, clearly, the, the first uh, item I have is uh, we made it. School started as scheduled. So nice job. that Thank goes you. with uh, the thanks of really everybody involved in the district. Um, you guys sit in front of us, the staff, the, the administration. Custodians, a lot of effort was put in to, to meet the fit. So, um, school started on time, so that was clearly a good thing. Um, so, we're kind of back to business as usual for the construction for the new phases. Uh, so, with that, uh, we'll have our schedule updates through August, uh, early in the next day or two, from those general contractors. <coughs> we'll sit down and start to dive back into those. So, those phases. Uh, remain on time. So the middle school, um, again, phase 1A, which was occupied. First school is substantially complete and the punchless process is ongoing. Um, again, that will occur on weekends, early in the morning, or after school, uh, in coordination with the staff over there. Uh, phase 1B, the, the next phase we're into for the new middle school, 
Um, lots going on in there. Drywall has commenced on the second floor. Uh, finishing is ongoing on the first floor. Some painting is starting to occur. So we're working right to left as you look at the building towards the gym. Um, that work. Uh, the mechanical room is up and running. Chiller, pumps, the boilers are going to get started here in the next few days. Uh, so there have been a few, I will call them complaints or comments about temperature in the building. Uh, so once the boilers are fired up, that'll help uh, resolve that issue between the chiller being operational and the boiler as well. So, um, and, that's, and that's also a result of the fact that that chiller was built to accommodate space that is not currently accommodating right Part of that, and we, we ran into that actually a little cold spell last week where it did get pretty chilly at night. Um, so we didn't have that heat to, to knock the chill off in the morning. Um, but we, we don't expect that to be an issue going forward. Uh, the bridge connector, the curtain wall, glass and framing is done. Uh, the site work really is the next big push out there. Um, comment on the dust, uh, that's an ongoing kind of challenge with the general contractor. He does um, use water to try to keep the dust down at times, but sometimes it does get out of control. Um, but we have had conversations with them plenty of times and notified them accordingly. Um, so we'll call up them again tomorrow on a specific uh, issue. Jace, so maybe one thing we can think about during construction is um, a I don't know how the how our filtration system is on the on the uh, HVAC. But is there some way of monitoring the filtration system of the fresh air coming in? Yeah, there's there's filters and they'll get changed out. Um, the contractor has changed out all the filters and then the all cold to get the maintenance um, kind of schedule and when the changes so we can yeah, it's all work. Really should pay attention to maybe yeah. you know whatever the normal protocol is probably step it up. We can do that. Um, so that's really the status of the middle school. Um, that next milestone for the middle school is the Christmas break, essentially to finish a 1B, which is essentially the building. The gym addition, if you recall, that completion date technically by contract on until the end of January. Um, they're going to try to bump that up as much as possible. So the high school. Um, just kind of jumping through these phases. Phase 1A was the auditorium. Uh, that's been done for a while. The replacement air handling units were changed out this summer. Uh, that went well. They're up and running. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. The performing arts area, uh, again, was turned over a while back. A punchless thing are starting to happen in there. I continue to try to close that punchless out. And Phase 1C, your new tech ed, and uh, DMC, the Digital Media Center, um, again was turned over for school, and punchless is ongoing in that area as well. While we're on the auditorium, Mr. Kelly, would you address the, uh, the light switch and all that stuff that we talked about back in the spring? Is, it, is that installed, working properly, everybody happy with that, or where are we at with that? I can take that one. They're actually working on that right now. Okay. We talked about it today, right? Um, so the electrician is, is finalizing some of the um, electrical wire pools and locations like that, and they're going to work with David Nash and his organization uh, to start doing the programming and get the head end equipment installed. Okay, so we're, so on, we're on that right now. Yeah, we're on that road. Hopefully, we can get that wrapped up in the next month. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. Break your mojo up no, that was a good one. I know Chuck's asked about it. He's waiting for it eagerly. Um, so the high school, so really phase one is essentially in the books. So we're completing the punch list, as I mentioned. Uh, on to phase two, which is the high school tower. Uh, clearly, if you've driven the site, you see the high school, old high school tower is gone. Most of the debris is almost out of here. There's some steel remaining and uh, some floor slab that they got to pull up. That, that work is occurring. Um, cafeteria service area, kind of that one connector area, um, is ongoing. There's some steel that's finishing up and some 
CME block work happened in that area. But all the major MVP infrastructure was reconnected through that area in time for school. Um, and the foundations actually have started. Um, there were 12 caissons for the new tower. Those are actually installed. Uh, the spread footing and grade beams are going to start here uh, for the next week or two. Hey Jason, I want to go now from the pool area. Is that come on finished? Yeah, so the pool um, was lagging <laughs> somewhat uh, just due to the you know, how those buildings were tied together. Uh, it was a pretty challenging effort to try to get that done by school, but uh, really at this point, they've moved the temporary wall away from the diving boards. Uh, the diving boards, I believe, are turned back into place. The lights are on. Uh, pool filter room, all the equipment is operating. So Bill Bain has started to filter the water through. So really the goal is to have the pool back by Monday. Okay, thank you. Good. We'll do all the testing of the water and all. Yeah, Billy will do all that. He, you know, the, right now is the, trying to get the heater, yeah, the heater attached and working so that it heats that water. Uh, it's chilly right now. So they had a little light issue back today with, I guess, the manufacturer reps coming out tomorrow. Just that. But he, he's been filtering the water for a couple of days now, so he's, he's testing yeah. each day and he'll get around. Um. Jay, how many total caissons are we? Uh, There's actually only 12. There's the portion of the, that new addition towards the your auxiliary gym, uh, where your rock is a little deeper. The design was to put the caissons there. And as you move kind of west from that auxiliary gym, the bedrock gets shallow. So the, the building's on its Great. Thank you. Um, really the last area was that service area behind uh, the distant kitchen is, is done and turned over. There's uh, some carpet we do have to put in a couple offices that um, have been turned over to Bob Gold and custodians to use that area as well. So that's really where we stand and um, like I mentioned, just really get back into business as usual on the construction side. Um, trying to separate the, the students and the staff from the construction. Uh, so there are temporary barriers, kind of to address the other comment in the middle school. Um, all the trades are required to provide their free clearances, uh, their Pennsylvania criminal clearance, child abuse, and the FBI. Uh, so we have all those in place, and uh, everybody is on site is passive, essentially, or badge on site. And I review them. So I, I get all the clearances and I review all the clearances to make sure that they're appropriate to be on school property. And, and from a temporary uh, hallway perspective, could you give us some insight into that? I know they're, they're uh, former containers, right? So they're made out of metal. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually an idea that was suggested by uh, Rikon to use the sea containers, which are made out of steel. Uh, so for fire hazard there, I wouldn't be concerned about those. Now there are intermediate kind of vestibules that got built where there's the emergency exits. Uh, so the overall approach was put in front of Tauger Township a couple of years ago and uh, they did not at the time require us to have any sprinklers or anything of that nature in there. So they are a temporary condition. Uh, so we did walk all of those with Tauger Township inspector and um, he was satisfied with how they were constructed and the emergency egresses and the locations for all those. Um, and that was before we opened school? That was before we opened school. Before we were actually permitted to open school, Collier had to give us the okay um, with all that protection. Uh, could you address the, uh, don't we have some safe, uh, campus safety officers? What, what we do have that? campus safety officers stationed throughout uh, those temporary hallways right. to keep an eye on students make sure that the kids are moving, and also to help direct students when they maybe get turned around and they want to go to middle school or high school. Um, so they help them with that as well. And they're in there all day, correct? They're in there all day. Yeah. So um, I don't have any change orders for you tonight. Um, so really the financial set is kind of where it's been the last couple months. Um, so as we move forward, I'll present those to you with the right the next board. The one item that is on here that we've talked about is the potential tank liner. That work is nearing completion, so we're going to finalize 
uh, that price of future construction. I'll put that in front of you in the next couple of weeks for a final round. Jason, the, the, the windows and the, the those we, we talked, are the screens that are supposed to go in there as well too? There, there are not screens um, that were specified, so we're probably looking into adding those or probably putting a stop right. just on the windows so it doesn't open. Okay. So we'll, we'll look into what's the best way to do that. So we'll have to be with the design professional and look into that and the window, window manufacturer. Mm -hmm. But I would anticipate you could add a stop so it doesn't open more than four inches. And those are the, the windows along the lower edge. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good concern. <coughs> so that's all I have. Let's yeah, see. Really, I we talked to the architects about that. Absolutely. About ideas, and I like the idea about the DIY. You know, it's, it, you know utilize that new tech head. You know, mm -hmm. you know, if that's the direction you choose to go. Mm -hmm. you know. Speaking of the tech head, we, uh, it's all fired up. Mm -hmm. Any any comments or? Well, it's first week of school, second week of school, so I don't know how much production they have actually started that. I still think they're in design and making sure kids are um, certified to run those the new equipment. And that um, but every, it, what's really great uh, walking, and I know this is for teachers, I know for kids, it's a lot of smiles. Uh, throughout, the, throughout the buildings, there's just a, a, there's an energy. I was talking to uh, Frank around today, and he feels that there's, even with his teachers, there's, there's an energy about this project um, and anticip an anticipation. So a lot of things that they would be an obstacle maybe or a frustration, they're overlooking. They're, they're finding ways to overcome those things because of the anticipation for you know, what they see at the middle school, what they see in the tech ed. Um, so they're really, uh, really proud of our staff for, you know, they're not, uh, at least I'm not getting, I'm not getting a whole lot of you know, this, that, so I'm really proud of all of our employees, because uh, they're overcoming a lot of distractions, maybe some frustrations that they normally had to benefit our kids. And that's where I, their focus needs to be. Their focus needs to be on educating kids, and I commend them for doing that uh, to start school when there was a lot of issues, uh, but they overcame. Um, Jace, can you give us an update on the middle, the old middle school gym, and where we're at with that? Yeah, so the old middle school gym, auxiliary gym. Um, I think your staff is going to try to move the rest of the furniture out of this weekend. Yeah, they're hoping to get it all cleared out this weekend. And then awesome. we have uh, Marin Electric probably has about a week, week and a half worth of work in the ceiling space, and then just try to get it cleaned up at that point. So by the end of September, the goal was to first. Okay, great. Appreciate that effort. Do you have any more questions or comments? The ones that were brought up here. Oh, yeah. We'll work with the architect and see if OSHA came through. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. We had, I was going to say that. Uh, we had a, I don't want to call it a surprise inspection, but OSHA pulled projects from the Dodge report and they pulled the high school project last Wednesday morning. Uh, so OSHA hit the site and walked the high school construction and received no citations. So that was a, a real good thing. In the construction world, when I get to site, it's kind of a certainly a stressful time. And, uh, the trades and the prime really are, are focused on the safety of the construction and everything that the staff and students are, are processing. Over with. So that was that was a good thing. That though obviously we didn't get any citation. We do. Uh, we would not be surprised if they come back um, check out the middle school construction because they only really had time that day to do the high school. Clearly, he was walking right there with his eyes on the middle school. So they're prepared. You know, we constantly go over safety at every meeting that we have, and um, we'll be ready. Well, it's not just the safety of the contract, but you know, the safety of the students and the staff and everybody else. I mean, and, and so talking, yeah. and talking yeah. to those contractors, I've had a mingle with some over the course of this time. 
a lot of them are, this is, they do a lot of school work working in the schools. So they go yeah. from one job yeah. to another doing education. So I thought that was, I mean, they're real, real with students. Students being around and just that, that time. Yeah, you have a lot of school contractors. So they're, they, they really work. they're well, well aware of what to do and not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, really, I think the only other comment was about asbestos. Um, that's been addressed. That was in a report done by a third party. Some of that work was in the scope. Uh, that's been taken care of. Um, and it will be taken care of in the old middle school when it's demolished. So. Yeah, they do an abatement first. Before they tear anything down, they go and they do an abatement to make sure. And then that's when things start to come down. I think that was most yeah, the only other one, the only other one is how would we relay the information on you know, an active shooter policy or procedure or you know? Well, so that that's a tricky situation because you, you, you don't, don't want policy. anybody you don't want anybody in the public to know your, your procedures <laughs> for an active I shooter. Want, for an no, active I want to make shooter. sure she's comfortable with it. I just want to know there is yeah, right. There. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So where would you hide? So and, and Julie can probably speak to this. Uh, before we even started school, um, we, we walked through that. So we walked fire drills, we walked lockdowns, we walked those situations. High school, all the buildings do that. So that they have a plan prepared for every building for multiple situations. Um, and the school resource officer. And we have school resource officer helps walk through this. We have, we have Alice training this year. Uh, so uh, a lot of our staff going to be is trained in Alice training. I think there's one building left that has to go through the actual drill part of Alice training and, and that's sort of new instead of hiding it's you know you, you find you find the shooter if you can get out get out and you all get out to a, to a specific place and we're not going to tell you <coughs> until it happens. So yeah so there's so the principals our SROs you know they're involved they really are and we take a lot of trainings we bring in uh, people for hours training, and they, they run us through the gym. And, uh, you know, we get, we are participants. We're, you know, and we go through different categories. And I got shot uh, with an air soft pellet, and, you know, they, you, you feel that. Um, and so our teachers go through that. Our custodians have gone through that. We've, we've had those um, Alice training seminars run by our SROs. What's really nice is all of our assistant principals are Alice trained presenters. So they can train people in the Alice training because they went through that training, training, training. Um, so it's something, safety is something that we really take a look at and we're, we, we meet about it, we talk about it. Um, we want to make sure that our kids are as safe as you know, we can possibly make them during the day and our adults as well. They're all great points. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jason, thank you for your report. Thanks, Jason. Thank you for hitting yeah. that deadline, too. Would have been a much different meeting. Wow. Construction report. And 4.5 is once again, any, any uh, buddy in the public would like to make a closing comment? sure that we're addressing them. Um, as there are only a couple of us that leave the building to go to other schools, twice this week I was almost front-ended by um, tractor trailers coming up the wrong direction. Um, that's something I think we need to address. Yeah, which, uh, like, you know, it's one way in and around the building and out. Well, they're no. coming up the back entrance the wrong direction. Uh, there are construction guys? They're delivery trucks. They're delivery trucks. Delivery trucks. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to so address Yeah, they're delivery trucks. That was twice this week, and um, you know, Donna happened to be behind um, the one guy. I go, who cares? She goes, I don't know. I'll see if I can, you know, see him or whatever. I go, I can't talk about it. Um, so that's a concern. Just 
for everyone, not just me. Right. You know, but parents coming up and they're leaving or whatever, and that truck comes around. You know, you just don't know. So that's something that needs um, to be addressed um, in uh, the performing arts wing. Um, we have no phones. We have uh, no ability to call for any assistance other than our cell phones. And um, Jason and I talked about the locks on the doors. Um, we, we've had a few issues where things are getting stolen out of the rooms. And so Jason and I talked about that and we're getting the keys. They put the new locks in, we just need the keys. So that's something that he and I had discussed. Um, and uh, the last thing I wanted to discuss, and this had to come up this evening, and I just, from a human perspective, we would very much like to um, encourage that there's a candidate replacement. We don't know if you're appointing someone. We don't know if you're just going to let it go through the process. Can you speak to that? I'm glad you mentioned this. I was Scott slid a note over to say, you want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> We do want to talk about it. So, uh, in, in executive session, we have decided we are not going to appoint uh, a, a short-term uh, director. Okay. And we are going to let it go through the, the election That's process. Right. And uh, we will welcome with our, our new director on December 6th or 7th, whatever our reorganization meeting is. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else would like to make another comment? See you know, what an encouragement. <laughs> um, two things, you just mentioned uh, the superintendent uh, replacement. Um, Actually, we were discussing the board member, the board, board, board director. Board member. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're missing one board member right now. Uh, as I see. Yeah, so we're, we're going to replace okay. them through an election process. Our superintendent search is another concern. I think you have a wonderful candidate So do I. <laughs> um, uh, when you mentioned the pool area, I, having had children with very sensitive uh, systems, uh, I addressed last year with maintenance about the chlorinated water and that that does not dissipate well, and while the new construction is going on and new HVAC system is happening, could they do a lot more to vent the air out of the indoor pool? Because it just sits in there, and chloramines are extremely caustic to everybody's uh, mucous membranes. So airways, everything, are, and I've given them articles on things that have happened to like swimmers who were, you know, that have brain injuries and everything from basically spending too much time in the pools. So they could up the filtration. I think they, I think, did you guys do something already about the? No, that would be more system of just doing this. So we have to fix this when we turn back on. Uh, one, okay. What are we doing there the interim? Well, no one's been in there now, right? So when it kicks back on, we have a temporary. Oh, these, okay. We go right, We go back to the existing system. Will it be eventually? We're open to all suggestions. I'm hoping. I'm hoping so because when it was active, I could smell it many hallways away. Okay. We can definitely always you know, keep looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's infinite number of things that can be improved in, in the district, so we're going to just keep working away. I won't, I won't go to the I'll just carry on. <laughs> 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 you can come back anytime. You can come back anytime. Yep. Yeah, right. Anybody else? Can I address the problems? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm surprised, actually, I know someone who works out in that name. I didn't know that you guys don't um, If you don't, in your offices you don't have phones, or your phone's small work. It's fine because I was at a surprise as you were here. I was actually checking the health desk and I don't see any tickets for the one that I was at. 
Tonight, we did have an executive session that discussed some litigation issues that the district is facing. We uh, brought, those were brought to our attention. Do I have any other questions or comments from anyone? Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Perry, second by Mrs. Lesnick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Alfie, you still with us? Yeah, thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, for being on the phone. Have a good night. We are a church.